Welcome to the section on bolted connection. In this chapter, let us study about the various fasteners that are used to connect the components to make it a single component unit or a structure. So, the connections will be made at different levels in a structure. Let us study one by one the types of structures. Based on the experience, the ductile behavior of the steel, the approximations and the assumptions that are made in the code are on all these points we are going to design a bolted connection. Following are the requirements of a good connection in the steel network. It should always be a very rigid, the connection should be very rigid, it should not be subjected to fluctuation the stresses do not be fluctuating due to the fatigue failure, it should be a, not be a weakening one, the joints whatever we make shall not be of a lower strength and it should be easy for inspection. The connections whatever wherever we make it, it should be easy for to view that and make any corrections in the connections. In general, the following are the types of connections that are adopted. We have got connections like riveted which is outdated, now we are not adopting this riveted connection. Then we have got bolted connection, welded connection and pin connections. We will try to study about all these connections in the coming sections. Right now in this session, let us understand what is meant by bolted connection. So, in bolted connections let us try to understand what is meant by a simple connection. A simple connection is one where you are going to consider only the forces that are acting in the members and no moment will be considered. Though any connection will take a some amount of moment to transmit from one, one component to the other component, still we assume that only force is contributing. So, the, uh, so, therefore, we call that simple connection which also can be called as a flexible connection is used only for to transmit the force not moment. So, the various types of simple connections are like lap joint and butt joints, truss joint connections a web frame angle connections where the connections will be made between beam to beam or beam to column, the angles will be provided in the web portion. We are going to study about the stiffened seated connection, unstiffened seated connections. I will explain you all these things with a small 3D models, all these type of connections you can understand from the 3D models. Let us have a look on the 3D models of the lab joints. Now, it is a simple two plates are being joined together one over the other and this is what we call as a single lab joint. This is an example of a single lab joint provided with bolts along the width of the plate and this is what we call as single row of bolting system. It is called a single row of bolting system. You can see the bolts, the washer, the nut at the bottom for the correction along with the washer. This is one typical example of a single row of bolting system for single lapping system. Now let us have a look on the other example. Here, there is also a lap joint where two plates are being joined together by two rows of bolting. It is called as double row of bolting system. There is a plane where we call it as plane of shear or shear plane. 
where the bolts may shear off at this level due to the application of load at the ends. Look into the other bolting system where two plates have been used here over the main plate. If I call this as a main plate, these two plates are called as a cover plates which is placed over this and the system of bolting is single row of bolting. I will look on all those things, we will try to solve the problems on this one when you deal with the problems. This is one shear plane and there is another shear plane. So you got a double shear here. We will talk about this in detail when I take up the problem. This is a double shear plane. There is one plane, there is another plane of shear for the bolts. Now this is also a double shear plane, two plates over the main plate where the bolting system is being provided in two rows as per the pitch to be provided as per IS 800 2007. The minimum pitch distance shall be 2.5 times the nominal diameter of the bolt. And this is the minimum edge distance or you can call it as end distance either way. Look into the other one. This is a single shear plane system, a lap joint system where the number of bolts have been provided more than two rows. That is in three rows we have provided. This type of system of bolting system can be called as chain bolting system. It is called as chain bolting system. More than two rows of bolts, I can call it as a triple bolted system. This has been become called as triple bolted system or chain bolting system. These are the two plates cover <coughs> provided one over the other. And this is another example where you can find it in the roof trusses. We can find this in roof trusses. A part of that section has been taken here. Where two angles have been placed on same side of the gusset plate. This is a gusset plate. These are the two angles which are provided on the same side of the gusset plate. The plane of shear will be one shear, single shear. If I take the side view, this is a shear plane, single shear plane. I can call this also as a lap joint. This is also an example of a lap joint two angles have been placed on the same side of the gusset plate. Shear, angle of shear is single shear. If I take the two angles placed on either side of the gusset plate, we call that as a double shear plane. two angles placed on either side of gusset plate. So I will take the side view here. There is a two angles placed on either side of the gusset plate. This is one shear plane. There is another shear plane. All this can be taken for the as an example for lab joint. Now let us study about butt joint. What is meant by butt joint? See these are the two main plates joined together end to end. I will show you this with respect to the each one of them.
considering one by one. Now let me home route the main plate first. These are the two main plates joined together end to end, not one over the other as in the case of lab joint. Observe. Over this you are going to place car plates on either side like this. It is always better you provide two car plates, one at the top and at the bottom or otherwise there will be eccentricity in the loading system and the failure of the bolt takes place at the earliest. Therefore, it is advised to go with two car plates, one at the top, another one at the bottom. And as per the design you are going to provide, the number of bolts you will be providing with number of required number of bolts as per the calculations that we are going to do place it and this bolts are the numbers to be taken into consideration the total number of bolts provided for this butt joint is 1 2 3 4 5 5 is the number of bolts to be considered, not 10 in number. Remember, always the bolts will be taken into consideration with respect to one side of the joint. This is the joint. So, whatever the number of bolts that is there provided on one side of the joint will be taken into consideration. Therefore, the number of bolts provided for this butt joint is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in number, not 10. Understand this. This is a longit this is a cross sectional elevation, and this is the plan you are going to see it. This is a single row of bolting system. Now let us look at the double row or the chain bolting system like that. Now once again, these are the two bolts joined end to end provided with number of bolts, the total number of bolts on one side of the joint, this is a joint, will be 10, not 20 as a whole. So, force divided by bolt value will give me the number of bolts and this is the total number of, this is a double cover, double row of bolting system. If you go with more than two bolting system, we call that as a chain bolting system. These are the two plates joined end to end, the, end to end, and you can find the number of bolts provided like this. More than two rows of bolting system called as chain bolting system. Right now, in this problem, in this figure, you can observe 15 number of bolts. Let us study about the diamond shape of bolting system where we will be doing all designs and other things. Now problems, these are the two plates. Now I consider, I can consider this as a gusset plate and this one as a main plate based depending upon the position where we are going to apply in the field. These examples can be taken in the trusses provided in the bridges. Now, this type of bolting system is called as diamond bolting system. The total number of bolts is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can see the plan of this one. It is in the form of a diamond shape, therefore called as a diamond bolting system. The last one is called as a staggered bolting system. I will just rotate this, show you the plan of this connection. This, the second row of bolting is not in line with the first and the third one. So, it has been placed in between this bolting system. Therefore, this is called as diagonal bolting system or 
staggered bolting system or zigzag bolting system this type of bolting system is called as staggered bolting system or diagonal bolting system or zigzag bolting system the pitches from ear to ear will be called as staggered pitch earlier it was simply called as a pitch now we call this as a staggered pitch now let us study about beam connection beam to beam connection where the connection is made to the webs in simple you can call it as web connection you yeah, have taken a, a room like structure with a roof here at the top below that we have got the sections beam sections you can see the beam beams here the cross beams connected in between let us study about how the connections has been made to the web to web connection as i said this is the main beam this are the two secondary beams provided on either side of the main beam and there is one typical connection that i am showing you where you can find that the connection is made mid that of this beam keeping in view all these heights and other things as per the code specification we'll talk about that in later when i come to the connection details detailing of the sections i will study i'll take a piece of this section and make you understand about the simple connections that are made the angle is been provided to the web of the main beam and to the web of the secondary beams on either side therefore the shear plane here will be two in number one plane is this side the other plane is here these are the two shear planes you are going to have so when you solve the problems of this type the shear plane to be taken is two in number your one plane this another plane similarly if i take for the side views you can see here there's one shear plane there's another shear plane these two angles spread on either side of the secondary beam this is the main beam so double shear plane you can have a part of this section and visualize it i have taken the the small sections of this one beams you can see the ang two angles placed on either side of the main beam one shear here another shear plane here similarly one shear plane here another here so double shear plane and you can find that the bolts angle have been provided near the flanges of the section all this depends according to the code so we'll study about detailing detailing about where to place this one where to place the first bolting all these things we'll study it in some other session if we take a sectional top view you can understand better all the four views the angles i have taken the sectional top view of the connection now you can find the two angles placed on either side of the secondary beam here one secondary beam two angles on either side of the web of the secondary beam all these connections are called as web connections 
so double shear here and double shear here shearing plane two planes and if you want to go with a single plane single shear in the case of web connection you can see here an i section <coughs> main beam and the secondary beam connected by an angle if you rotate this side angle has been provided on either side of the web year 1 and year 1 therefore if I take this view it will be a double shear plane this will be an example of a double shear plane there is one and there is another one if you take the, the side view of this one see the plate is an additional plate it is a safety measure it is not going to take up any force here in this plane no shearing effect shearing will take place one year therefore it is a single shear plane if you are interested you provide this plate or otherwise there is no problem so the shear plane will be a single shear plane now let us have a look on the beam to column connections in the earlier part you had seen that beam to beam connection was made now here we have got beam connected to the column section called as stanchion so uh, it is another simple type of connections that we are going to make the angle connection angles connected on either side of the web of the beam and to the flange of the column so now here the shear plane will be single shear this is a connection between the flange of the column and the angle if you turn this now this will be a case of a double shear shearing will take place on this side of the web of the beam and the other side so this is a double shear plane this is a connection made for the flanges and web similarly you can have either three or four angles connected together like this on all the three sides or it can be on the four side also you can have a connection on this side also now let us have a look on the beam column connection in the previous video you observed that there was a connection between beam and column with web connection web connection to the beam and angle connection to the flange now in this case you can observe the angle has been placed below the beam section which is called as seated connection this is the simplest seated connection the seat angle is provided here with the maximum number of bolts as per the designs the maximum number of bolts that can be accommodated is 4 since the depth of angle is maximum is 200 mm as given in IS code this is a seat angle so this kind of type of connection we call as unstiffened seated connection the top angle that has been provided here is also a simple connection a nominal angle that has been provided here this is the connection between the beam and column on the flange of the column you can see in this sketch the connection has been made between the beam and web of the column a nominal angle at the top is seated connection angle at the bottom now this is unstiffened seated connection 
Now the last part of this type of a simple connection is seated stiffen seated connection. Now look at the bottom view. where the seat angle being additionally stiffened. This is a seat angle with maximum number of 1, 2, 3, 4 bolts given earlier. Since the force or the reaction at the support will be more, additional number of bolts have been provided here by making use of two angles. called as stiffen seated connection. These are the design bolts. This bolts connected to the outstanding legs of the angle are called as tack bolts. What do you observe here? This leg is called as outstanding leg. This is a tack bolt and these are the design bolts. This is about stiffen seated connection. 